more than our own purpose. Somebody say amen. I mean, we don't even let Yankees join our church. I mean, they got to learn to say ain't and up iron and over iron in there. We, nobody in our church is allowed to say guys. You guys, pastor, amen. You guys down south are so awesome. Anytime the word awesome is used, we say, I vote, we make a motion to move him from the road. <laughs> Pastor, amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you heard about that Jew that was an airplane pilot. And, uh, and he was getting in his plane, and it was a Chinese man going to fly with him. And the Jew was just prejudiced, plain out. He didn't like anybody but Jew. That's it. Chinese dude sitting over by him. That Jew just looked over and he said, look, man, before we ever get started on this flight, I want you to know I, I hate, you know, Chinese people. <laughs> and the man said, why, why you hate Chinese people? <laughs> he said, well, said y'all bomb Burl Pearl Harbor. He said, man, you silly. He said, that's not Chinese, that's Japanese. <laughs> That Jew said, don't matter to me, Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, all the same, man. So they took off. Y'all, everything's just fine. Got up there about 30,000 feet, and that Chinese said, I want you to know I hate Jews, too. And that Jew man said, why you hate Jews, man? He said, you sank Titanic. That Jewish pastor said, no, that was an iceberg. He said, Goldberg, Feinberg, no different, no different. <laughs> uh, that is funny. Praise God. Amen. So it ain't no different, I guess, praise the Lord. I read the Psalms chapter 9. I read the first few verses of it page 602 in the Schofield Bible. And uh, the, the, uh, the great men I've read after say that he's probably writing this. Obviously, we know through divine inspiration, there's no credit given to man. But probably spawned as he's wiping off the blood of the sword that he's beheaded David with. Imagine that. He might be writing this psalm as he's got his foot on the carcass of a lion and he's just cut that lion's throat or he might be there as he's skinning that bear out but then he's pinning these good words on the hills of victory this is what he said I'll praise thee O Lord with my whole heart and I'll show forth all thy marvelous works I will be glad and rejoice in thee I will sing praise to thy name O thou most high notice the contingencies of this praise when mine enemies are what yeah, that's when you start praising. They shall fall and perish at thy presence. Our Heavenly Father, how we need your touch today. And I, I do yield myself to you. My flesh is weak, and I pray for a touch of God. And I, I want to be used of you from the top of my head, the sole of my feet. It's by desire to please you. And I pray for courage and backbone and boldness to say everything that I ought to say. And then I pray for discernment and wisdom beyond my experience not to say things that wouldn't exalt Christ, expose sin, exhort saints to go on for you. And I pray for this good message already preached and how it's helped me and reminded me of what it costs to pay for my sins, the debt that was paid at Calvary. Never let us take for granted that atonement made for us. And now Jesus, for this limited time this morning, I pray you to arrest the attention of the listener and Lord, I, I pray that if there's anybody lost here, we don't say it out of redundancy or habit. It's sincere from my heart, and I believe it's pastor and these people would not be here if they didn't care about souls. And so, Lord, I pray for the lost that may be here, let them be saved today. And then for the saved that are here, let them leave here, Lord, determined to make a difference in 21st century Christianity in the place you placed us. For we ask these things in the wonderful, high lofty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> when I read this text, I see victory. Can y'all see victory? Say I. I mean, here's a, here's a victorious, and, and the Christian life's about victory. Uh, I was seeing, I was preaching up in Chicago or in, in Hammond one time. 
at an all men's meeting and they had a, a quartet singing Bartlett, a man named Bartlett was the son, grandson of the man who wrote uh, page 120 in our red book, Victory in Jesus. Man, I got cold chills when they said, we got this quartet gonna sing and this is the man who wrote Victory in Jesus, grandson singing in the quartet. I just stopped them, I said, hold up, man. Let me get you to sign my Bible. Somebody say, man. <laughs> I mean, the grandson of the man who wrote victory, and somebody help me. I mean, I'm feeling something on that. Victory in Jesus. I mean, we don't sing, oh, defeat in Jesus. I mean, we don't come to church and gloom, despair, and agony on me. No, it's about victory. It's about, it's about winning. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Well, that's what the Bible says. There's no temptation taking you, but such as, and I, I do agree we're sinners, but I think we're, we're caving in on it. Don't, we don't have to live in sin. He saved us from our sins, and I'm not talking about uh, sinless perfection, eradication of the flesh, or some second work of the grace, but I, I think we cave in too easy on this thing. Well, everybody's gone sin. No, we don't have to. Uh, amen. Amen. Praise God. And, and we, we've caved in. We're supposed to be winning. But I'm pastoring a congregation of people that are losers, man. I'm talking about many of them lose their testimony. I'm talking about families that used to be on fire for God that were in the bus ministry and soul went and separated and now they're on Oxycontin and getting pulled over DUI. Deacon stealing money from the offering plate. I'm not making it up. I know y'all's church is not like that. But I'm just talking about ours, man. And that's not the way it's, they don't have to lose their marriage. Look at me, you don't have to look at the losers in the crowd at church and say, well, I know one preacher that did this. And I know one church and I know this family in our church. Man, you're, 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 you're comparing the failures of your life to the failures of others. Man, that's a, that's a hard uh, waller to get up out of, praise God. The way I understand, we're supposed to be winning. Oh, victory in Jesus. We're supposed to be on the winnings. Last time I read Revelations 19, we are coming back on white horses. And, and hey man, friend, and on his thighs, we're in King of Kings and Lord, he's gonna have many crowns on his head. His vesture's gonna be dipped in blood and out of his mouth's gonna go a sharp two-edged sword. And I don't think the Battle of Armageddon is gonna take very long. Somebody say man. I heard about that Battle of Armageddon. I thought, ain't gonna be much of a battle. Somebody, I mean, are you kidding me? The, you're talking about the devastation of Armageddon. Right. He'll whoop that crowd so quick, man. Them brim horses are going to be swimming in blood to their bride before you can shake a stick at a snake. Somebody say amen. 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 They're going to take long. We're winning. We're supposed to be winners. But reality is I'm preaching to two people in this room, winners or losers. And we've become so politically correct that we're misleading our children. They, they go into organized sports and the last team in the division has a pizza party. You know, everybody gets a, gets a, I'll never forget Troy was playing baseball, first year in baseball, and it was first pitch hit and they threw it to first, Troy was playing first base and the pitcher caught it and threw it, out one. Next and popped up a guy, I mean, uh, incredibly just closed his eyes and it fell in his glove. <laughs> Two, third one struck out. And they kept putting the ball back on the thing. I mean, the, the, the dude couldn't even hit the ball. And he starts trotting towards the base after so many swings. Man, I'm talking about three outs and it's to the dugout. Somebody help me. So I said, man, the dude just can't count. He went to public school, amen. And so, like I did. And so then finally they hit the next one and it went to pitch. He threw it, Troy, and, and out three. Well, Troy started trotting to the dugout. The umpire said, hold on, son, everybody gets to hit. I'm thinking, are you, uh, what? <laughs> we, we've told our children there's no such thing as a loser. A, a consolation prize, we don't, everybody's a winner. Not in reality, you aren't. I, I, I have a large church role. I'm talking about, I can't find them, the FBI's looking for a lot of them. <laughs> And they're not all winning. Yeah. I've got young people who've lost their purity. Right. They've lost their testimony to school. Yes, I'm talking about man, Brother Scott, I can start naming over people. I'm not happy about this. I'm sad. Yeah. It's sad, the reality, there's losers. Yeah. And we don't have to be losers. 
It's predestined that we succeed. Don't get nervous. I'm a whosoever will man that believes in the predestination of the believer. Amen. Once you get saved, God has a perfect will of God for your life and he wants you to live for him and serve him. And I'm seeing families that are losing. I'm seeing young people who are losers. I'm talking about they've had blessings of God and obtained good things of God, but they're losing. And we've accepted that loser's mentality. We've, we've started talking this way, these, these Christian philosophers who know nothing about the Bible. Start, well, we believe in the permissive will of God and all that talk. Look up in it. I can't find no permissive wills in the, I find perfect wills. What that is, you're planning on failure is what you're doing. Hey, sir, why don't you just stay married to your wife? We, all of us have. Somebody say amen. Hey, punk, stay, get tough and stay like we have. Everybody, look at me. We don't want to be the only ones suffering. Somebody say amen. 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 We, we, we've, we've developed a mentality amen. of losing. Right. It's everywhere. I mean, well, uh, if you have a good, strong church, you won't have many people. You run, listen, I've run off more people. We ran off 40 in the last three months. A hundred's come to see why the 40 left. <laughs> Our offerings have gone up $4,200 a week. Amen. Is everybody listening? Amen. I ain't making it up, hoss. You don't have to lose. Amen. It is possible to be victorious Amen. in this Christian life. Amen. Now watch it, and he writes, he said, I'll praise it. Now some of y'all ain't getting it. And the battles that we're facing are spiritual. Right. It's about spirit. Let, let, let me, let me quick, I believe, I believe in predestination of winning. Amen. America's not here by accident. One nation under God. Some of y'all don't understand. God's in what's going on in your life. Here's a for instance. I'm going to give a long introduction and a real short message so y'all stay with me. For instance, our present day conflict with Islam, that's spiritual. Say what you will. The rest of the world views America as the representation of Christianity. Well, I know Obama said we're no longer a Christian nation. And if you voted for him, there's plenty of room on the altar for you right now. The altars are open. Somebody say, I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're black, white, polka dotted. Hey, he's half white. Somebody say amen. Is everybody okay? He's just as much my problem as he is theirs. Somebody say amen. Amen, hoss. I don't know why everybody half white gets claimed by the black. Somebody say amen. Help me, somebody. Amen, friend. Just as much Caucasian as they are black. It's preaching time. But what's going on in America? What our conflict? Okay, it's Islam. They're the enemies of Christ. It's not in the name of Allah or Muhammad. It's in the name of Jesus. Everybody, you understand? That is a spiritual conflict. I'm against the rag-headed, rug-riding, camel jockey. Bunch of genie in a bottle, bunch of Muslims. Amen. And don't you misquote me and say I hate them because I didn't say I hated them. Right. I said I'm against their ideology. Right. And a double-minded man's unstable and all. And if you're, if you're very touchy about me saying that stuff, you're double-minded. Right. You can't have it both ways. Amen. Every sympathizer of Islam is as kin to a terrorist as a pig is a sow. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. I'm against them. So, so in fact, I didn't even know. I mean, I'm telling you, this stuff, 9-11 came. They're spiritual. They're spiritual. They, they don't like what, it's not, it's not, nobody straps bombs on them to fight capitalism. I'm against a free enterprise system, so I'm gonna go bomb somebody. That thing gotta be spiritually connected. And they're hooked to the devil. It's not the work ethic and, that they're against. Somebody, it's not rich people they hate. It's the God of the King James Bible they hate. That man. You know, so 9-11 so comes. Now, now honestly, I mean, I blame, my, I blame my groundwork. I didn't even know what the Koran was at 9-11. I didn't even know what Islam, I didn't know what a Muslim was. I'm except Muhammad Ali, and, I, and his real name's Cassius Clay. Somebody, he was born in Kentucky. Old Lonnie Madden, he was knocking on doors one day in, in Louisville and, and came up there to, to this house. It had a, had a big black car out in the driveway. 
kind of in a, in a nicer area and a black, older black lady came to the door. And he invited her to the church there at Shawnee Baptist Church. He's talking to her about the things of God. And he looked over and he saw Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, standing over there. And he said, man, that's the champ. And he, and he looked, he said, he said ma'am, he said, he said, now, uh, that looks like Muhammad Ali. She said, yeah, so that's my son. Oh, oh, Lonnie Manley said, man, we'd like, to, we'd like to invite you to Shawnee Baptist Church. He said, he said, I'm black Muslim. She said, no, you ain't. You missionary Baptist just like I is. Somebody say that. <laughs> Praise. Is everybody okay? Amen. Yeah, he, I'm a, I'm my hind leg. He's a draft dodger is what he is. Right. Stay with me. Right. Now, I didn't even know what a Muslim was. Right. Yeah. Don't get nervous, friend. Hey. I'm not racist. Listen, praise God. I like Charlie Pride too. Somebody say amen. Look, look up in here. Hey, hey, look at me now. And so 9-11, I didn't know what a Muslim was. I didn't know what Koran was. That backfired on them. Because ever since that, I've been preaching against Islam. It baby dedications. I mean, we've been dedicating baby now. Say praise God. And praise God, we don't want this child to be influenced by Islam. God put a hedge of protection around. I mean, at weddings. I bet wedding out saying praise God they're going to raise their family in a blessed God Baptist church. Hey, amen, friend, I'm telling you, hey, every service I find somewhere to bust a Muslim. Somebody say amen. <laughs> And the doors for the printed word have been open through our military like never before. Yep. Our mission's been trying to find a way to get in. I know they're trying to discourage it, but there's been a lot of those backpacks. There's been a lot of those duffel bags full of Bibles. Amen. And those, those closet churches and hidden churches over there in the Middle East have gotten the word of God. Amen. It's backfired on them. Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. Okay, you know, our Asian conflicts. That's communism. Vietnam, Korea, that, that was communism. I'm against Red Korea, I'm against Russia, I'm against North Korea, Amen. and I'm against Russia, Amen. and I'm against North Korea, Amen. and I'm against Russia, Amen. and I am against North Korea Amen. and Russia. Amen. And what I'm saying is communism doesn't, doesn't stand against Christianity. There's a battle there. A spiritual conflict one nation under God, that's not all of that's the God of the King James Bible, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We represent Christ. And the first tenet of communism is atheism. So that was a spiritual battle. Bring it on down the line, World War II. They're going, uh, Hitler's gonna annihilate the Jewish race. So God raised up America. We're supposed to win. America was supposed to win. Don't apologize for America winning. America was supposed to win. So Hitler who? And pot belly boot over there, all them, you know, I got two words for Japan. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. I got, I got a word for you, Adam Bomb. Don't delete that from the history book. That happened. And in one day, I'm talking about one day, they coming over here to, 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 to sign a, a peace treaty of surrender. You understand? The day they signed their surrender, look at this. Historically, 500 Baptist missionaries left this soil. Prior to that, the national religion in Japan was Buddhism. You could not be another. There was no other religion represented or organized in the nation of Japan prior to 1943. Is everybody listening to me? 500 missionaries on one day sent over there with Bibles under their arm. Now, I know we're supposed to win. Now, the second largest religion in Japan today is Christianity. Da 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 da. We win. Somebody help me. Well, First World War. Y'all about to get it now. That was socialism. That socialism used to be an enemy to freedom. Now we've embraced it in our nation. Everybody, by the way, if you if you if you can work and ought not and you're not working, you're sorry as corn. And I'm sick and tired of my IRS agents coming and fleecing me to pay for your sorriness. 
Amen. If, you, if you've paid in your Social Security, you're probably never going to get it anyway, but you deserve it. If you paid it in. Amen. But this bunch of sorry for nothing crazy checks and nine babies by nine different men checks. Hey, that's so dug up out of hell, I can't stand it. And socialism is enemy. So, so again, here we win. God prevails. Let's go on about the Civil War. Now, I'm Southern. I don't apologize. But immorality is not sanctioned by the Word of God. This nation's problem, immorality, it's wrong. And right prevailed. Somebody help me. Amen. His truth is marching on. You still ain't getting it. Some of y'all ain't getting, we're supposed to be winning. Under, let's all say we're supposed to be. Don't say we're supposed, just say we're supposed to be winning. It makes it faster. Like you guys. All right, all right. 1776, we just celebrated this month. I'm, I have no loyalty whatsoever to England. I can't stand a bunch of wig wearing, bunch of sissy talking. I can't stand to hear a bunch of sissy talking Englishmen. In fact, I canceled Geico insurance because of that sissy talking British lizard. I went back to Farm Bureau. Somebody say amen. A feminine lizard talking about an a English muffin. Somebody say God. I don't eat English muffins, I eat biscuits. Somebody say amen. Bunch of wig wearing bunch. I can't stand it. When I used to listen to rock, I didn't listen to that stuff. I listened to Southern rock. Somebody say amen. Bunch of Led Zeppelin or something. That's crazy. Is everybody okay? Everybody all right? Hey, I'm talking about, hey, we're supposed to win. And, and, and then here come them pilgrims over here. Nenta, Santa Maria, the Penta, the Mayflower. Somebody help me. Well, the devil fought them all the way. Because the devil knew North America is going to be the seed plot for evangelism. You understand, more Bibles are printed on the soil of America than any place in the world. China's a great mass producer. They become, in their, in their advancements of technology and, and all, all of the, the textile goods, but we still print more Bibles than anybody else. Thomas Nelson Publishers in Nashville, Tennessee, prints more Bibles. Then I'm telling you, I'm talking about mass production of the word. God knew there's going to be evangelism and soul winning and Bible institute. Every Bible help. Everybody talk about we need to get a Bible for these other countries in their language. Just let them learn to read the King James because every other Bible help they're going to get is going to come from the English. We're printing all the commentaries. Any, amen, friend. God predetermined that this North American soul and the winds begin to blow. And the storm, and many ships, ships sank. But praise God, on Plymouth Rock, a buckled shoe, square collared wearing pilgrim stepped out with a Bible under his arm. Somebody say amen. amen. And the devil said, don't let them get over there. Don't let them get over there. Don't let them get over there. But guess what devil we got here? Yes. And then they met up with old Pokey Harness and them. <laughs> Heathens. Say what you will, but you can't even go to a state fair without a bunch of Satan worship. And they call it folk stuff. That's devilish. That's Satan. I don't care. Don't tell me your grandma was a Cherokee. If you want to give your land back to the Indians, go ahead. I'm keeping mine. Somebody say amen. I was plowing the ground the other day, was putting in a crop, I turned over several in arrowheads, I said, I hate it for y'all. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Look up in here, that's pagan. Amen. Idol worship, totem poles. Amen. I'm glad the Cowboys won. I, did, I went, I said, up in Canada, I'm an interim pastor for a while in British Columbia, and I was invited to a powwow. That ain't nothing but a Indian Woodstock. <laughs> Man, I walked on the grounds of that powwow. There was enough marijuana burning on them grounds. Listen, I was getting high off the secondhand smoke. I was like, hey, dude, take one of these tracks, man. Like, hey, man, like Jesus died for you, dude. Man, I thought I saw Geronimo riding through on a spotted pony. That's a pagan. 
Amen. Amen. We, we got pictures of Dr. Howells and, and Mays Jackson and B.R. Lakin on our wall. We thought about putting one of John Wayne. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and under, underneath the cloak, long live cowboys. Somebody say amen. Don't get mad. I'm glad the cowboys won. Yeah. We're supposed to win or every single American Indian be going to hell today. They'd all died of smallpox, but God so designed that white man would come over here and salvage their race. Don't get mad. I said white man. Don't get mad. He'd come over and salvage their race with the cure for smallpox. Their whole nation would have been annihilated had we not brought some cure. They ought to think they'd all be going to hell had it not been for the message God so designed. Now, am I making any sense here to y'all? We're supposed to be winning. And when we win, there's some results of winning. When we lose, there's negative results. But when we win, there's results. Real quickly, three points and we'll go home. Our sermons are like a fat woman crawling through a barbed wire fence. A few more points and I'll be through. Hang on just a minute. <laughs> Chapter 9 and verse 3. He said, when my enemies are turned back, verse 3, they will fall and perish at thy presence. First of all, when we win, when we turn back the enemy, when God's people are victorious like we're supposed to be, when our families stay together, when our marriages last, when our children turn out right, when our churches are growing, when we make it through problems and difficulties, y'all understand what I'm talking about, and overcome the adversity and the obstacle that the devil places in our pathway, when we come out victorious on the other side of the storm and we walk on the, hey, 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 the, the peaceful seas, hey, then that's when, first of all, Thanksgiving is rendered. Amen. Say what you will, you don't hear much praise like when you're up at the hospital. Yeah. Right. I, I know we ought to, we ought to give thanks and everything and that ought to be our heartbeat, but I, I, I've been around it all my life. I've gone to funeral homes and gravesides and they ain't a lot of shouting at a graveside. Every once in a while, we'll get a little happy and think about heaven. And when we, when we lose our family, when our, when our uh, goals are not met, when our disappointments abound uh, and discouragement abounds, uh, hey, very little praise. But when we win, like we're supposed to win, like he predestined that we win, like he purposed that we win, when we come out winners, Thanksgiving's rendered. Real quickly, we ought to thank him for his presence. When we win, we got to know God was involved in it. Our enemies are subdued. They're turned back at thy presence. I know ranks of our fundamental brethren are so scared of the Holy Ghost they won't even say ghost. But I want you to understand, if you have any victory in your life whatsoever, it can all be directly, I'm talking about directly connected to the power of God. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Any positive result in your life is a result of the presence of God. Amen. And I've seen people try to subdue his presence. He come riding that donkey in town down there, Jesus did, coming into Jerusalem. Amen. All the disciples, you know, King James, all of them. I guess they just meant male. But my Bible said all of them. I guess they just meant old people, but my Bible said all of them. I'm King James only. I don't know what y'all are. I'm mainly King James. Somebody say amen. And all the disciples come in there and they were saying, Glory to God. Holds honor. Blessed is he. Woo! It comes in the name of the Lord. They're throwing their coats down in the palm trees, and here come, here come them Pharisees. They still here. The sec, that same sex still. I, I, hush. You tell that crowd to hush, Jesus. Rebuke them. This is what he said. If they don't praise me, them rocks will. Amen. Old brother Goosby's got a message on ain't no rock gonna do my shout and praise God. Amen. Is everybody listening? Amen. You ought to praise God for the presence of God. Amen. 
if you do feel him, and by the way, I know our salvation is not based on feeling, but I'm so glad when I got saved, I got something I could feel. Amen. You're trying to tell me something big as God moves in you and you not feel. You're trying to tell me that something as big as the Holy Ghost can take up residence in this tabernacle. Hey, you ain't got to act like I act, but you're going to feel God every now and then, friend. Hey, I've never said you had to be shout, you had to shout to be right with God, but if you're right with God, you won't mind if somebody else enjoys herself a little bit. Amen. Stay with me. And we ought to rejoice at his presence. Thank God when we win, we accredit victory. Hey, it points to God. Every victory I've ever had in my life, every time I've gained ground, every time I've seen success, praise be unto God. It's been directly connected to the power of God. That I have no, I have no power in myself. But all of it came from God. When we win, we render thanks. Thanksgiving's rendered for his presence. Thanksgiving's rendered, I think about this, for thou hast maintained my right and my cause, verse four. Yeah. We, ought to, we ought to praise God for a purpose. Yeah. You, you Bible believers and everything, why don't y'all get a real life? We got one. Right. We call it eternal life, yeah. everlasting life, yeah. like we ain't gotta go to hell, you know. <laughs> get that. I like our life. I praise God for the purpose in life. We're living in the church age. Anytime you see kingdom on these signs, that's ignorant charismatics. We ain't in no kingdom age. Thy kingdom come. We're not building the kingdom. We're building a church. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, not World Outreach Center, not, not Oasis Fellowship. By the way, if it don't say church on the sign, I kind of doubt it is one. Somebody say amen. 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 Upon this rock I'll build my church. I, the purpose of my life, I'm about local New Testament church Christianity. Amen. We've got these tails wagging the dog. Amen. It's not about upon this rock I'll build my Bible college. Upon this rock I'll build my Christian school. Upon this rock I'll build my home school. Upon this rock I'll build my what? Hey, look at me, my ministry. Nothing makes me want to vomit more than to call amen. And they say, such a, such a ministry. I go, hold on. I'm looking for the church. A ministry is an outreach sanctioned by a local church. The church ain't the ministry. He equips the saints to do the work of the ministry. That's the outreach of the local church. That's the, the church, bless God. The hub of all activity. I'm talking about the nucleus of the activity of every born again child of God. Hey, I don't enjoy, listen, I won't even join the Coon Hunters Club. Somebody say amen. I'm not gonna divide my loyalty from the church. I'm a member, I am a member of blessed fire, nothing but a Baptist church. My only associations with a Bible believing, praise God, Baptist church. If it's happening at church, that's where you need to be. Well, we try to teach our kids whatever they start. They didn't, we're having a makeup game on Wednesday night. And we they try to sound spiritual. We're trying to teach our kids whatever they start, they ought to finish. Well, what about when they join the church? Yeah. If the church is having a cockfight, you ought to bring a show and a roosters to it and a, some sharp spurs. Somebody say amen. Is everybody listening? Look up in here. If it's happening at church, that's where you need to be. Amen. I never seen such such disloyalty. Well, my in laws came in. Well, leave them at the house if they don't want to come to church. You ain't got but fifty two Sundays left. And look at me, friend. In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. I'd hate to be at home watching American Idol on Wednesday night. Somebody say, "Man, hey, blessing the house of God." Amen. The Bible said, the Bible warns us about it in Hebrews. Did not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together. That's a matter of some is. But exhorting one another. And so much the more. As you see the day approaching. And she's getting real close. She's at the door is what he said in Matthew. That coming. Y'all know Matthew. You know like. The second coming passages. Somebody, y'all do read your Bible, don't you? Sometimes you gotta help these people up north. Is everybody okay? He's coming back. 
hey, he'll be back. You better get serious about church. Amen. You have a purpose in life. Right. It's not an egotistical, it's not a prideful purpose, it's about a church. Amen. That's right. I think about we give victory. I'm glad I got victory in my life because I got something to get up for on Monday morning. I got a reason to live. I think about his protection. Verse five, thou hast rebuked the heathen and destroyed the wicked. He goes on and, and, and elaborates how God's protected. Can I say to you preachers, if you're still married to your first wife, look up here. You ought to praise God for that. Because don't think the devil ain't had his target on your home. Me and my wife don't even get in arguments. We get in blessed fired fights. <laughs> I mean, we got in one other day. I said, she started on me. And I, I, said, I said, hush your mouth. <laughs> and she said. <laughs> I said, your problem is you act like your mama. <laughs> if you had got some whooping she was growing up, you wouldn't act like that. <laughs> and we was in it, boy. She said, I'm married to the devil. I said, if you are, I'm married to the devil's wife then. <laughs> And we get, was getting after her. She come to me on her knees. Said, get out of that bed and fight like a man. <laughs> and I didn't see her for about a week after that and my right eye began to open just a little bit on one side. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, watch me. It's by the grace of God. I married a girl and never been in church in her life. I led her sister to the Lord in a youth meeting I was preaching. Old Tracy came to watch her sister get baptized, got under Holy Ghost conviction the morning I was preaching, come to the altar just shaking all over. She's bouncing on the altar. Got born again. Got baptized, say she never, all she knew was Michael Jackson. That's all she knew. That's all she knew with miniskirt, cheerleading, married an independent missionary Baptist preacher. You talk about culture shock, also. Her eyes rolling back in her head, man. You mean we can't wear that? No, you can't wear that. You mean we can't go there? No, you can't go there. You crazy? We missionary Baptists. Somebody say amen. Is everybody okay? Look up here, neighbor. Hey, I'm talking about it's the grace of God. The enemies we've had to face, pastoring. Man, not every Baptist is like some kitten. I remember the first time a Baptist deacon bowled up, just bowled up his fist and threatened to whoop me. I said, they didn't cover this at Bible college. <laughs> I've been accused of everything, but still in a white baby and painting in black. Somebody say amen. Is everybody listening to me? Hey, I, you, hey, I want to taste the grace of God. She's still with me. Stay with me problems and disappointments and, dis and despair and discouragement. But I want to tell you, God's been with us all the way. And when, the, when we celebrate that 24th anniversary, hallelujah, there's a victory right there. We shouldn't have made it that long, Scott. She, could, she couldn't have got over Michael Jackson. Come on, friend. She still likes Elvis Presley a little bit. Amen. Is everybody all right? Hey, I'm talking about you all to thank God. Every time you have a birthday, every time you celebrate a special occasion with your family, every time the church has a homecoming and another year rolls around, every time you see a soul walk down the aisle and follow the Lord in believer's baptism, I'm telling you, friend, it's about time right there to say, wait a minute, he's brought us this far. He brought us this far. He's kept us. He's protected you. I know a bunch of preacher's children who's not in the will of God, but there's two of them that are. Amen. Old Scott's paid his dues and to serve the Lord. Now pastor in a large, one of the largest churches in the state of North Carolina. Bible-believing church. Y'all praise God for that stuff. Don't take it for granted. You could have been one of them casualties. Internet, pornography, bunch of adultery. Praise God it ain't us. Thank God it ain't our family. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, friend. Yeah. It's preaching time. I want to pray. Hey, that's how I clap hands right there. Woo! Praise God it ain't me. Yeah. Hey, man, I know about some children that messed up, but so far it ain't been mine. Mine love the church. They like everything about the church. They look forward to going to church. Hey, man, friend, it ain't mine yet. 
Hallelujah. Lord, when, when we win, do y'all get any of this? It gives God the opportunity to be praised. Thanksgiving is rendered. Let me give you this. Transparency is revealed. Verse 16. And the Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. You understand, when we win, when, when America wins, let's make application there, when God's representatives win, it gives the picture of God that the world doesn't see. Yeah. You understand, them Muslims over there, they think God's winning. Yeah. It ain't George Bush winning. It surely ain't Obama. He's one of them. Any, don't you get mad at me. Anybody with the name Barack Hussein, if that's not a Muslim name, look at me. I'm an astronaut. <laughs> that's something right. If I'd change my name to Leroy or something, somebody say amen. Help me. It is Barry, by the way. Somebody say amen. That's what his white grandmother calls him. Somebody help me. Is everybody all right? Don't get mad at me. It's preaching time. When, when God's people win, when the church is victorious, it gives the platform for the world to see God. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Who lights a candle? We got a lot of bushels hiding our candles today. The world needs to see the church prevail. The, the, the world needs to see a family that's separated and how God can bless them. You'll be amazed what God can do. God can take a preacher's daughter and make her the president of her student body, 2,400 people, give her full scholarships to sing uh, on voice scholarship, be the second seat alto in the state of Tennessee. God can do that kind of stuff. If you ain't careful, he can make his son the starting quarterback and the point guard, only white boy on the team. Is everybody okay? Is everybody all right? If you ain't careful, God can do that kind of stuff. If, if you'll just allow God to bless you, and look, it gives the world an opportunity to give, see God. But God won't ever do that for us. No, he won't with that kind of mentality. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Y'all stay with me. When we win, God's approach to the wicked is transparent. We win, they get to see how God works. His apprehension. By the way, AIDS is not some coincidence. AIDS is the judgment of God on immoral, heinous, out of hell sin of sodomites. It's not everybody's disease. One man for one woman for one lifetime, you won't have to worry about no AIDS. It's not my disease. Because if I get any blood transfusions, bless God, I'm going to get them from somebody I know. Somebody say amen. Help me, neighbor. I'd just soon die out no blood as have to take a risk on it and flip a coin. Somebody say amen. amen. Is everybody all right? Yes, I'm talking about friend of mine, look at me. One man for one woman for one lifetime. Amen. Hey, you better start listening to me. It's preaching time now. Amen. Hey, let her learn at home. That's what the Bible said. Watch this, one man for one woman for one lifetime will salvage that thing. Amen. Amen. Yes, AIDS is a judgment of God. Say what you will. Look at Hollywood and look at the plague of problems they have. God's hand of judgment. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise. I know that pertains to the second coming. But he's promised judgment. And the mills of God's justice may grind slowly, but they will grind. Somebody help me. O.J. Simpson was as guilty as Billy the Kid was. And uh, no, he didn't get, but, but God got him. Don't you worry about justice in this case and justice in that case. God's the judge. Justice will surely come. Amen, neighbor. And I'm saying to you, when God's justice comes, or when God's hand of judgment falls, they get to see. It may not look good for the home front. It may look imbalanced and the world may seem like they're having the upper hand on God. But I'm telling you, that gay person, I hate that word. There ain't nothing gay about dying with AIDS. There's nothing gay about that, friend, and that turns around on them in the end. Y'all see that? When God, when we win, it's an opportunity. The, the, the triumphs. I think about the transparency revealed, his approach, his apprehension, his authority is revealed. By the way, he is the Lord Jesus Christ. I like to say Jesus Christ the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ Jesus the Lord. I like that talk. Don't get nervous about this lordship talk. You don't make him Lord, don't get nervous. For God hath made him both Christ and Lord. He's already been made Lord. And, and what you do, you yield to his lordship and sooner or later you're going to or he's gonna jerk the rug out from under you and you will be on your knees. Because one day every, knee, every rag-headed Muslim's gonna bow that he's Lord. He's gonna exercise his lordship. His authority, I, I think I'm losing y'all, but I want to tell you, don't think that God has lost his authority. Every time that the church prevails, every time the cause of Christ succeeds, every time another soul is saved, every time another family joins a church and gets sobered up off of drugs, and, and every time we pick up a child and their mama comes to watch them get baptized and they get saved and then their husband gets saved and gets a haircut and takes his ear bobs out of his ear and they praise God, starts wearing a long sleeve and covering up his tattoos and starts singing in the choirs. Everybody listen. Listen, every single time though, it's screaming to the world, hey, hey, that's God doing that. Man, RUs, XYUs, KKLs, none of that's going to solve your problem. I'm going to tell you what to solve your problem. God will fix your problem. Higher power, my hind leg, he's God, friend, amen. I'm talking about every single time victory comes, it's a time for the world to see God for what he is. And when the moon's uh, uh, dripping ashes into gold, gold uh, uh, it says uh, lost its shine uh, and the world begins to crumble, you can count on one thing, God will uh, still be in control yeah. of the affairs of men's lives. Amen. Count on that yeah. when we win. Yeah. Can I give you one more? Yeah. When we win, and we're supposed to win, right. we're not supposed to be losing our homes, losing our testimonies, losing our families, losing our credibility. When we win, thanksgiving rendered. When we win, transparency is revealed. God's seen. He's, he's known in his judgment. But when we win, there's triumphs that are rejoiced. I'm talking about victory. Now, thanksgiving and rejoice is two different things. Rejoice is what other people see. Thanksgiving is what God knows in your heart. But when we win, the Bible said in verse number 19, Arise, O Lord, and let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves, but be but men. In other words, but you the God. Now here's what I give you, I'm through. When we win, it's a time to rejoice. That last verse in the text that... that that the preacher preached at today ended with this, and uh, they shall shout that are upright in heart. And they shall praise the Lord. Let them that are righteous praise the Lord. Let them that are an upright in heart shout unto the Lord. That's what, that's the, it's happy, it's glorious. Now, now let me stop. I'm not winning all the time. Now y'all saying, yeah, I like all that, but Brother Tony, man, I got a church split going on. Man, I'm familiar with those. We have them all the time, man. I wouldn't know what to do if we didn't have one. How do you go to church without like threats on your life, you know? Sometimes I don't feel like I'm winning. Has anybody ever been like that? Like we're all feeling good now and all this is good and that's right, but Brother Tony, sometimes, has anybody by the uplifted hand say, I, I don't always feel like I'm winning? Well, let me give you some message for that. And we're through. What I do when I don't feel like I'm winning, I go back to previous victories. I go back to the night I was lost and I came down to the altar on the right-hand side under the organ on the mourner's bench and Leon Carlton prayed me in. I go back over and I just go back. I got a, I've got pictures of that church. Not just photos, but I got some pictures here. I can smell what the carpet smells like. Amen. I, I got vivid memory. I, got, I go back to where when I was lost and undone. Now, everybody in there that's saved got this one to go back to. I mean, I go on back. I mean, it's all bad. People's leaving the church, man. People this, that, and the other. I ain't got enough nickels to rub them together. I mean, it's not good and things are bad and, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And, but I tell you what I can do. I can take a little trip down memory's lane and go back over here and say, I can say, whoa. Whoa, I got saved. And I got called to preach. Yes, sir. I've got some previous 
victories. Amen. Some of y'all, if you ain't got nothing going on now, you better go back to where you had one. When David faced up there the Valley of Elah, he needed a little bit of cheerleading. He needed a little pep rally. Saul said, all of them, y'all, you ain't going to do that. He said, oh, yeah, I had a bear one day. Come down in there. That's in the originals. I had a lion come down in there. Praise God. I whoop that bear in that lion. This old uncircumcised Philistine ain't nothing. It got him through the Valley of Elah. Previous victory. Let me say this. Possible victories will help you. You say, you're a dreamer. Well, don't, don't, get, don't wake me up in because I got some things I'm hoping will happen. <laughs> Look, for instance, I, you don't know this is going to happen, but you don't know this ain't going to happen. My, my, none of my daughters are married yet. I got the oldest daughter. She's 22 or 23. And to Neil. And I got this, viv, I got this, I got this, this could happen. That, that she's going to meet this boy and he's going to be like Baptist. <laughs> with no tattoos on him. And no ear, earring holes. I mean, I, I ain't judging everybody else. I'm just saying, can't I have a right to have like a, some kind of, you know, vision? I mean, I would love it to be, he has no earring holes, no tattoos, little old King James haircut. Hey Amen. And, and then they, they meet up and he starts sitting on, they get married and they have a grandson. Man, you're really crazy, Brother Tony. You know, I, I know, I know, but you don't know what ain't gonna happen. This helps me along the way. It helps me when I'm not winning, when I feel like I'm losing, and the things I, I say, well, wait a minute, she might marry a good boy. And, and he got me, and, and, all, and they may have a grand boy. And, and, and Tennille and Terry Lynn and TC could be singing one Sunday night. You say, you think like this? I think just exactly like this. That one night there at the podium singing. And that grand boy is sitting by my son-in-law on the front row. And they're singing that. On some morning when I wake in that wonderful city. And they get over that chorus. I'd like to sit down and talk it all over with him. I'd like to say, Lord, you loved me when the path was so dim. I cannot repay him when I get to that city above, but I'd like to talk it over and thank him for his wonderful love. Yeah. And about that time, my grandson starts crying. Yeah. And he hits that altar. Amen. And his red-headed mama sees him. And she starts squalling. Yeah. Amen. And she falls out on that altar beside him. And his grandmama sitting on this side of the building in the back sees it. And she starts walking down the aisle doing this. And then his great grandmother on this side, that's proof that the Bible's right. I came to put mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. <laughs> Praise God, you ought to see fulfillment of scripture at our church on Sundays. <laughs> my mother walks by my wife and says, <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> and here comes her, and here comes my mama, his great grandmother comes walking down this aisle. And about that time, his two aunts, they shout in Baptist. They don't have to get your permission to. If that God's around and it's real, they'll embarrass somebody. And I can see, I can see TC saying, whoa, whoa, and Terry Lynn tearing in there with her like Comanche Indians. And we got four generations in that altar getting saved. You say, ah, you don't know that's gonna happen. Look up in here, you don't know it ain't. Yeah. That, you don't know it ain't. Right. It might happen. Amen. I tell you what's got me through a lot of darkness, a lot of times of despair. As I got to think about what God could do one day. If the Middle Tennessee Baptist Church only knew what I'm thinking right now, it'd scare them, man. I ain't through yet. It'd scare them to death if they could have only, if they knew what I'm thinking. Hey, I'm telling you, there's a platform for the old time way there God's given us. If they only knew what I was thinking, it'd scare them to death. But do you say it ain't gonna happen? It might not, but do you mind if I just enjoy a little
little bit about what might happen. Hey, praise God, it could. Hallelujah. Hey, friend, it just might happen. Amen. Amen. I like winning. If I can't win, I just like to think I'm winning. If you, you'll never have it if you don't see it. Let me give you this, not only the possible, but the promised victory. Some things hadn't happened that I know is going to happen. Like the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. With the shout, with the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel, yeah. dead in Christ shall rise first. Lord. I know that's going to happen. Yeah. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up, harpezo, uh-huh. snatched up. S- s- seven definitions of that word harpezo. As we get the root word harpoon, it means to be lifted up and out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It means a swift transition from one place to another. Harpezo, praise God. I'm King James only, but I kind of like that one. <laughs> Is everybody listening? We're going to get swiftly transferred one day. Amen. Y'all listen to me. It could happen. Could happen today. If some morning I am gone from this veil of tears, I'm going home to live again. I am going on a trip. When I say goodbye, I'll live again. Over on the other side, I'll live again. Over on that golden strand, I'll sing and shout. With the mighty angel band, you'll see me rise. Beyond the starry skies, I'll live again. Over on the other side, that, that's a promise. I have a mansion over there, built in beauty rare. I'm going home to live again. When they lay me in the grave, don't you weep for me. I'll live again over on the other side. I'll live again over on that golden strand. I'll sing and shout with a mighty angel band. You'll see me rise beyond the starry skies. I'll live again over on the other side. It's going to happen one day. You all millennials can hang around. You mid-tribbers can stay around for three and a half. I'm pulling out on the first load. I saw a door open in heaven and the voice that was the sound of a trumpet talking to me saying, come up hither. I see the lights of that city so bright of my home sweet home we're nearing the shore we're nearing the shore soon our troubles will be o'er We'll suffer no more. Parting all done and victories won. Tis joy to know that we're nearing the shore. And I see the lighthouse. He's Jesus divine, who will say, welcome, dear children of mine. Come in and rest in this land so fair. Tis a joy to know that we're nearing the shore and we're nearing the shore. We're nearing the shore. Soon our troubles will be o'er and we'll suffer no more. Parting all done and victories won. 
It's a joy to know that we're nearing the shore. And it won't be long now. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. How many this morning say God's spoken to me through the messages preached? I needed to hear that. Would you slip your hand up? I needed that today. I want to be a winner. I don't want to I don't be satisfied with subpar Christianity, second rate. I don't want to live in the wilderness experience when there's a Canaan land available. Those Old Testament types are given for in samples. They're given for admonition. Some of you today are walking in the wilderness. You never tasted of Canaan. Let me say that it's good over yonder. There's milk and honey. It's a land flowing with good things. If you're just wandering today and you want more than that, you're not satisfied with the loser's mentality. You want some, you want some victory in your life. It ought to be everybody in here. But I, I know I'm preaching to myself today. I want, I want to be a winner. If that's you, why she plays to an invitation, would you find a place on these altars? Would you come?